Hello and welcome to the fifth video in a series on how to make a Space Invaders style game in Scratch 3.0. By now you will have created your spaceship sprite, your space background, uh, your laser shots and aliens. Um, we're more than halfway through having a really playable game. Um, now in this video we will be looking at how we can make the aliens move across and down the screen as the game is played. Now the basic mechanic of making the aliens move together is going to work a bit like this. Um, the game's stage is going to effectively work like a clock and with every tick of the clock um, a signal or a message is going to be broadcast to all the sprites in the game. The alien sprite clones will pick up this clock tick message and trigger a move routine in response. So, to get this clock ticking mechanism working, we need to select the game's stage and go to the code editor for it. So let's click on the backdrop. And we've got our very simple code currently in there. Um, and we're going to need to add into there um, a when I receive block and set it to listen to the start level message. So that's under events and when I receive and we're going to set that to start level. So it's listening out for the start of the game. Now, so that we can have code that changes the clock interval, we're going to need to create a game-wide variable um, that's going to be called clock interval. So we're going to make a variable and we're going to call it clock interval. And notice, because we're doing this on the stage, this variable has to be available to all of the sprites. Press OK. And we're going to set that to an initial value. So let's just grab our set block, change that to a clock interval, and we're going to set it to 0 0.5, which is going to equate to half a second. So now that we've set that clock interval, we next want a simple loop that's going to run continuously, broadcasting a clock tick message every time that clock interval uh, passes. So to do this, we need to add a forever loop. So that's control forever and we drop it on here and we're simply going to um, put a, a wait in there and instead of waiting for one second we want to wait for the clock interval so go back to variables grab the clock interval put it in there so we're going to wait for clock interval seconds and within this we just want to broadcast a message that's like a game-wide clock tick that's going to get picked up by the other sprites so uh, events broadcast and we're going to create a new message and it's simply going to be clock tick and that's going to be a message that our other sprites particularly our aliens can listen out for now finally just to give our players a bit of a chance to get themselves ready before the game begins and for the alien clones to um, have time to appear we're going to add a one second wait at the start of this so that um, there's just a little bit of a pause before we start that loop. Otherwise, what happens is um, before people are even ready and possibly before the aliens have cloned, um, they'll already be moving. Okay, now we don't need the clock interval variable showing, so we can get rid of that. So variables and just untick that. And that's everything we need to do um, on the stage. We now need to go to our aliens and add code to make them respond to this clock tick message. So let's click on the alien sprite and inside its code editor, we're going to add when I receive, so that's under events, when I receive, and if it doesn't already say it, choose clock tick. Next, we're going to need to create um, a variable to keep track of which direction the aliens are moving in. Uh, now, we're going to need to make this a variable that's available for all sprites so that each of the individual clones of the alien can read its value. So let's just go to um, variables, make a variable, and we're going to call it uh, alien shifting direction for all sprites. Press OK and we're going to want to set this to an initial value when we start the level we're going to set, so let's grab another set in here, set alien shifting direction to and just word the, write the word right so we're going to shift to the right. Uh, we don't need to see that so we can just untick it and you also need to create two more variables uh, this time these are going to be sprite only variables um, and they're going to be called alien shift x and alien shift y and these are going to determine how far uh, along the x-axis an alien should move when it goes right or left 
and also how far down the y-axis it should move when it shifts down. So go ahead and create those variables as well as sprite-only variables. Okay, and once you've done that, we're going to set some initial values for these, again in start level. So let's uh, grab a set block and uh, let's make some space. We're going to set alien shift X to 10 and we're going to set alien shift Y to 20. So let's now add some code to our when I receive clock tick block. Uh, in order to actually do something. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually test, well, what direction are they shifting in? And if it is right, then we're going to broadcast the message to shift to the right. Uh, otherwise, we're going to broadcast a message to shift them to the left. So we need an if else block. So that's under control, if else, uh, if else. And the thing we're testing, we're going to need an equals operator, so equals. And we're going to say if alien shifting direction, which is a variable, so if alien shifting direction is equal to right, then we're going to broadcast a message, so events, broadcast, and again, I've, I've done this before in preparation, uh, I have a new message called shift aliens right, but you won't have that, so you'll need to click on new message and you'll have to enter that in. So enter that in and choose shift aliens right, and we can right click duplicate and drop in the else block broadcast shift aliens left again you'll need to make that as a new message but shift aliens left if um, alien shifting direction is not set to the right okay and so that's going to happen every time our um, clock ticks but we now need to write the code that actually is going to run when these messages are broadcast so let's add in a when i receive and let's do the shifts to the right so when i receive shift aliens right now the first thing I'm going to want to do is I just need to change the X position of the alien sprite. So I go to motion and I'm going to change X by and I'm going to change it by my alien shift X variable value. So variables and alien shift X and that will move my aliens over to the right of the screen. Okay so if I press uh, the green flag we can see this. So here's my aliens produced and they're moving over to the right um, you can see a little yellow uh, flash probably, that's the pulsing of the clock. Uh, now the problem is that the aliens are all mushing up as they reach the edge of the screen and instead we want them to sort of reach a certain point, come down and start going left. So let's stop those and let's add an if statement to just check whether the aliens have reached the edge of the screen or not. So control, if, drop it on here and we're going to say if the x position of the alien um, so we're going to need an X position of the alien and I'm going to need a greater than so that's this block so if the X position of the alien is greater than now around here is probably about about 200 normally I think it's 250 to the very edge and minus 250 so if we say 200 should be safe and uh, if we reach that point what do we want those um, aliens to do? Well we want them to shift down and then move over to the left. So let's broadcast another message. Broadcast and again I've got a shift aliens down message that I've previously made but you're going to need to click new message and type that in but you're going to make one that says shift aliens down. So we're going to broadcast shift the aliens down and then to make them move left next time the clock ticks we need to change the value of alien shifting direction. So that's under variables, set, and we just click alien shifting direction and we're going to set it to the, to the word left, okay? Which means that this if block will be false, so it will run shift aliens left. And uh, just because I know, because I've done this before, we're actually going to add a little weight in here as well. So um, if I go to control and weight, and I'm going to wait for the duration of a clock interval. So I'm going to go variables, clock interval. Uh, and the only reason for that is it just means there's a little pause before we go down. And it just looks better. It looks more like the original Space Invaders. So if we test this now, we should find that they move to the right and then they get to the edge and they stop because we haven't got any code for shifting down or shifting left. Uh, but they should stop. And indeed they do, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's write the routine for making them shift uh, down. 
That's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is a when I receive. When I receive, shift aliens down. And it's literally, we're just changing their Y value. So motion and change Y by, um, and I can't just put in alien shift Y. If I do that, they'll actually move upwards up the screen because positive Y values go upward. And as we bring, as we bring things down, we actually need to um, reduce the Y value or make it more negative. So you should remember this from uh, when we did our um, spaceship, uh, spaceship motion, uh, but we can make this a negative number by multiplying it. So if I grab a multiply block by negative one, minus one. So this will become a, a minus number and it will shift down the screen. So when we uh, shift aliens down, it will move the aliens down by 20 pixels. So let's see if that works. So it's going to go across the screen and they should start moving down the screen. Yep. Perfect. They've moved down the screen. Fantastic. And the next thing we want to do is now write the code for them to shift to the left. Uh, well, that's pretty similar to the code for shifting to the right. So we can duplicate it. So let's duplicate that whole block, change that to shift aliens left. And now we need to do a change X by the negative of this. So again, we're going to do a multiply. Drop that in there and a minus one here. And um, we just want to change this as well because the X position now, when they reach the left edge, we're going to be checking if it's less than minus 200. So let's get rid of that operator and let's put a less than one in. So X position is less than minus 200 so if it gets too far over to the left then what do we want to do well we want to wait for clock interval shift them down again and this time set their traveling direction to the right so let's see what happens if we run this all the way through so they're moving to the right they go down and they move to the left and now they should go down again and they move to the right Perfect, so we've got our aliens moving across the screen every time the clock ticks. Uh, that's absolutely what we wanted. That's everything for this video. If um, later in your game you want to make them move faster or slower, then you can change the clock interval here to say 0.2 and they should move a lot faster. It might be good for a harder uh, difficulty level perhaps, or you can make it like a really easy game by increasing that value to 0.8 or 1. And also, if you feel like yours are just moving too much across the screen with each tick or too far down the screen, then you just need to change these values for Alien Shift X and Alien Shift Y. So in our next video, we're going to move on to actually shooting the aliens and um, making uh, them disappear and adding a score up whenever the laser interacts with an alien.